Good morning and welcome to Harmony United Methodist Church. This morning we are worshiping as Church Without Walls, the virtual worship this morning. Um, we invite you all to be in a time of prayer, in a time of community, even though not all are in this place today. Friends, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to invite you this morning to consider the readings we will be offering. There will be two readings, and if you wish to read along in your own Bibles at home, I'll let you know our readings this morning will be taken from Psalm 23 and also the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. We'll begin this morning with our call to worship, and our call to worship will be Psalm 23. Please Listen and follow along. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible translation this morning. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Friends, let us listen and prepare our hearts for worship as Elaine leads us in you are mine.
thanks be to God, that was beautiful music. That truly has set me, set me in the mood for worship this morning. I pray that that has done likewise for all of you. Our reading this morning is an Old Testament reading out of the book, 1 Samuel chapter 16. These are verses 1 through 13. Hear this word. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded, and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to him trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and invited them to the sacrifice. And when they came, he looked on Iliad and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. And the Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of God for the people of God. We say thanks be to God. Friends, our instruction from Scripture this morning rings loudly to me. These words from the book of Samuel, The Lord does not see as mortals see. How very true these words are ringing out today and over these past few weeks. I have been made very aware that my eyes do not see as the vision of God sees. My eyes are mortals' eyes. I, for one, cannot see a virus. I, for one, cannot tell the difference between a person who has an infection and one who does not. For many months, we as a nation could not tell who and who did not have an illness because we did not have tests available. We could not see. We did not have eyes to see. Now, I also cannot see the outcome of our present situation, this day or season of uncertainty in which we live. 
and I cannot see who will act out of faithfulness and who will act out of fear. But those are visions that are in God's sight, not in mortals' sight. And our worship service, even this morning, illustrates the very limits of our human sight, for I cannot see most of you right now. In fact, I mostly see a camera and a few folks here to keep us in worship this morning, and I give thanks to David and to Elaine and to Alice for helping, helping be able to offer this worship today. And most of you cannot see each other either. Our sight is limited on a day like this. It's acutely obvious our sight is not as God's sight. Yet even on a day like this, when we do not worship in the same hall, in the same sanctuary, God's sight connects us together and brings us together within God's own vision. I trust that God's sight connects us in this time of worship, even when our worship is not bound by a space or even by a time. God's sight brings us together and is beyond our own sight. Yet even as I am awed by God's sight, I am drawn back to the reality of our day. We are separated by distance because we concern, we have concern to care for one another, and we have concern to protect our neighbors. And we don't know when we will return to do what we call normal Activities, And so I call this time a season of uncertainty. And in this season of uncertainty, I'm drawn to the prayer that has the common name of the serenity prayer. Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Grant me the strength to change the things I can change. Grant me the wisdom to know the difference. And in the season of uncertainty as we are in, this prayer speaks to us, but also psalms speak to us, psalms that speak both bare truths and comfort. Psalm 23 today is like the serenity psalm. It reminds us that we cannot change all things. And God invites us at times to accept with serenity, to accept what we cannot change, and to do so on God's terms. Psalm 23 tells it to us this way, Be comforted by the green meadows. Be comforted by the still, gentle waters of serenity. And so we pray to God this day to help us accept what we personally cannot change and help us accept what we cannot see, for God's sight is not our sight. Yet some of us are called to be agents of change, agents of servants to others. And we are called sometimes out of God's calling to us and others by our vocations. And may God grant those who act for the community good to be strengthened as they serve, to be protected where they serve. But the serenity prayer reminds us all that we face internal struggles where we have to either accept a serenity moment and wait or we must discern how God is calling us and to act with God's strength. And that very internal struggle was Samuel's struggle for God had instructed Samuel to turn away from King Saul and to anoint a future king. To anoint a king only whom God would know, only whom God could see. And for Samuel to follow and obey God would be seen in mortals' eyes, in human sight. To follow God would be seen as treason against King Saul. And yet still, Samuel obeyed. Now Samuel's internal struggle mirrored the external conflict that was going on around them. For Judah faced a season of uncertainty itself. It was wartime in Judah. Saul had been in battle with the Philistines. Lives had been lost. The wounded needed care. The nation needed assurance. Families needed consolation. There was great 
uncertainty. And in those uncertain times, God had instructed Samuel to find the future king. And so God led Samuel to Bethlehem and to Jesse. Yet almost like Saul, Samuel was on the verge of jumping to conclusions when he saw Jesse's first son, Eliab. Through his own human eyes, Samuel was convinced, merely by Eliab's appearance and nothing more, Samuel was convinced that that was the chosen one. To Samuel's mortal eyes, Samuel looked like the leader the nation needed. Now many of us probably jump to conclusions in our own lives, especially jumping to conclusions about things we cannot see Samuel was no different. Samuel was aware of good leadership qualities. He had been following Saul around for many months. And Samuel was aware of what might be needed in a leader in a time of war. Samuel had been following Saul's campaigns. But Samuel, in this moment, he too was short-sighted. He was guided by human vision. He did not have God's insights about the changes to come. He did not have God's insights about the leadership qualities most needed. Samuel did not recognize the need for a nation-building leader, one who could bridge together the disparate and different tribes and clans of Israel and Judah. Samuel did not know Only God could see those needs. And the person who would possess the necessary character that God needed, God could see this, Samuel's eyes did not. But in that moment, Samuel had to decide. Would Samuel have the wisdom to decide and know the difference between what he could not change and what he could change? Would Samuel have the wisdom to tell the difference between his own sight in God's sight. Samuel's eyes could not recognize the needs of the future, the needs that God laid out before this people. Yet thankfully, Samuel was anchored in a faith in God and obeyed God's guidance as he prayed and as he listened to God. Samuel looked through his own human clouded eyes just as we look through our own very human, clouded eyes. None of us can see with the clarity and breadth of God's vision. We must struggle against our human tendencies to look through our own less lenses without listening to God's guidance. Samuel had that very same internal struggle. But Samuel had wisdom as the serenity prayer invokes, and Samuel with wisdom backed off and let God act from God's vision. So like Samuel, we live in a season of uncertainty, but we must take it seriously. Otherwise, it might go too far. This could become a season of destructive blaming and shaming. It could turn into a season of destructive Hoarding, it could become a destructive season of rejecting people. But if we allow actions and feelings of blaming and hoarding and rejecting others to guide us in this season, we are not walking with God, but we are walking against God. In our day, we need the wisdom to know when to have serenity and when to act. I trust that with wisdom from God, this can be a season for us to show the world that the message and the hope of Jesus Christ matters. The season of uncertainty can be a season when we may offer God's grace, offer God's peace and comfort. And so we Christians have a decision to make. On the one hand, we could fuel a foolishness that leads to panic or fuel a foolishness that leads to undervaluing the health of our neighbors. Or we Christians can show the world around us a better way, a way to live faithfully, to minister, to show love and mercy, to offer a hopeful and responsible witness in the time of pandemic. 
We need to speak with the voice of God's compassion to a world that needs hope. Therefore, God invites you to pray for wisdom and be calm as you listen for wisdom. And perhaps, like in Psalm 23, you are invited to accept serenity in this time, to spend time in the proverbial green meadows or beside the still waters of the soul, and to listen to God's calming voice. Though you may also be called by God to act to make bridges between people who act divisively, to be like a David in building up a nation. Or perhaps God invites you to be like Saul, to patiently wait for God's next instruction and then to act faithfully under God's guidance. Friends, in, in former times and seasons of uncertainty, Christian saints around the world responded with words of grace and peace, with words of love, faith, and hope. Be not afraid in this season of uncertainty. And to a world that desires hope, use the words God has given you, the stories of God's goodness in your life. Let your presence of calm show the world a hopeful way, a better way. You can do this because God is for us and not against us, and God's sight is beyond our sight. May God's wisdom be with you all. Thanks be to God. Amen. For our time, a season of uncertainty and precaution, may you, O oh God, our protector, bring us through safely, strengthened in community and renewed in faith. God, in your goodness, have mercy on us. For all the world's peoples to know peace with justice and an end to all oppression, God, in your goodness, have mercy on us. For the leaders of all human endeavors, from presidents and prime ministers to local boards of education, may justice and mercy guide your decisions. God, in your goodness, have mercy on us. And for the healing of bodies and minds, the healing of families, the healing of communities, God, in your goodness, have mercy on us. And for the petitions you have this day, call them to mind in this moment. Let them rest in your heart and in your soul, and know that we as a community are praying together for God's affirmations, for blessings and healings, for compassion and for mercies. God, in your goodness, have mercy on us. And we are a thankful people in this day as we do and every time we gather, we offer to God our gifts and our offerings. This is an unusual time and an unusual day here in the church. But this is still a time when we lift our thanks to God and we give thanks and we recall God's goodness for us. And that we may continue in, to enable and strengthen our mission to show God's love to each other, to the community, and to the world. I invite you to continue to share your gifts and offerings this week. And we, of course, encourage folks to go to our website where you'll be able to find a, a link to uh, online giving as one way to off make offerings this week. We can also receive mailings to the church as well as we'll have folks around the office during the mornings. You may bring an offering during the week as well. This way we may continue to strengthen the ministries even when we cannot see each other face to face on Sunday morning. So, friends, in our moment of thankfulness, we give an offering prayer. God, true God, you have awakened faith in us through your amazing grace. You give us hope. As a vibrant and virtual community in worship, we praise your holy name and offer our thanks to you. We offer our gifts to you. We offer our service to you. Amen. In this day we also may return our hearts as faithful and obedient children and offer our prayer of confession. All merciful and tender God, 
Your grace washes over us. And in times such as these, where hope might slip and resolve weaken, we confess our sins. We ask your forgiveness. Through Christ our Redeemer, this day and all days we pray. Amen. of the children of God, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, Harmony United Methodist Church, thank you for joining us for worship this morning, this day. I invite you to continue to stay in contact with another, share your stories, serve where it is possible to serve, continue to view our Facebook and our website as more information comes out in the coming days. And this morning I thank once again David Elliott and Elaine Stuckey and Alice Zalatoris for being here to help us lead this worship time. As we depart this day, may God's blessing be upon you and strengthen you, and may you be blessed with the wisdom of Samuel that you may know the difference between times to act and times for serenity and peace. As we conclude, listen to the final uh, strains on piano. God bless you. Mm -hmm.